quite a few people are wondering what the difference is between CMake and the older Make. And the answers I found online tend to focus more on CMake being a meta build system, having a GUI, so a mouse based clicky user interface available, and Make being part of the old, being older and part of the, the GCC compiler suite, which is all true but doesn't really tell you what it's like to use either of them as a developer. So let me go through some of the differences that actually make a difference, they actually matter uh, if you're using it as a developer. So first up, CMake's reason for being, raison d'être, is to help you build cross-platform software. So software that will work on a wide range of systems from Windows to Mac OS to various Linux distributions and more. And then, uh, if you're not familiar with C and C++, the C and C++ uh, world, there are a wide array of different compilers, and each of them has their own way of working, their own command line parameters, and dealing with the differences between them can be a nightmare. And that is what CMake was designed to solve. So, you you can use the best compiler for each system. So, for Windows, you can use Visual Studio. For Mac OS, you can use Xcode, or C Lion or whatever. Uh, for Linux, you'll know, probably go with the GCC suite, and CMake will bridge the difference between them. So, right there, that is one of the key reasons why you might go for CMake. Now, in terms of using them with the old Make, the way you built software was you would create these build rules. First, a build rule on how to compile individual source files. Then you'd have build rules to link them into binaries and things like that. And that's how you, you built it up. Now, there, there's a bit more to it. You have these variables and you can create all sorts of options and make it as complicated as you want. But in a nutshell, that's the way it works. With CMake, CMake is, is different. You create these build targets and you tell CMake which source files should be linked and linked into whatever targets there are. And also you give it what uh, external dependencies you want to link to, what external libraries you want to link to. And then CMake will do the rest. It will generate the make files for GCC, the Visual Studio projects for Visual Studio and, and, and whatnot. That's, so that's how it works. Again, a lot of options and other things, but that's the basics. Building the entire code of a large project can take a long time, so you really want to build incrementally. If you change this source file, you don't want to have to rebuild everything. Um, if you change this header, you only want the source files that use this header to be rebuilt. Uh, to do that with make, GNU make, uh, it's almost like a secret code, so you have to know to add this particular um, parameter to the GCC command line. And then GCC will generate these star.d dependencies files, which is basically a set of make rules, build rules, that say this source file depends on these header files, and this one depends on these header files. And then after you've done that, in, in your make file, you add this pattern substitution rule to take your the .c, .cpp source files and build a list of all the star.d files that have been generated. And then at the bottom of your make file, you have an include dependencies thingy that will include all of those dependency files into your make file script. And with all that done, then new make can do an incremental build, knowing exactly which source files to rebuild every time you change a particular any header. So quite a bit of work. Uh, once you know how it's done, it's not too hard. You do a copy and paste every time you've got a new, new project. CMake just does that all automatically. It generates, when it generates a make file for GCC or, or, or a project file for video, Visual Studio, it will handle all the dependencies for you. Now that's internal dependency handling. When it comes to external libraries, CMake can check if you if those uh, if the header files if those libraries are available so if, if you're using let's say OpenGL it can check if OpenGL is available it can check if if, if you're using libcurl or raylib or SDL or uh, whatever it is it can actually it, it can not only check if it's available uh, with modern CMake you can get it to download the source code of open source dependencies and build it there for you. No messing around trying to look for all the dependencies. Now, good old Make doesn't 
have any functionality built in for checking dependencies. I'm sure you can probably put together scripts to do the same thing, uh, but you're on your own, and it's not something that I would personally try. Now, there are some trade-offs, though. If you're using CMake, you might feel a little bit more isolated from the compiler, um, because you're not directly controlling all of the command line parameters anymore. Uh, you you, you kind of don't want to, because the parameters for Visual Studio are totally different from GCC. Right? So you don't, you don't have direct control over that. You kind of got to trust that CMake is choosing the optimal settings for release or debug, although you, you can override them if you want. I guess it's a little bit like the difference between a, a manual transmission and automatic transmission in a car. Um, manual enthusiasts appreciate the fact that they can control exactly what the power settings are, exactly which, which gear, what the, the ratios are, and get precise, so they can get exactly what they want. Right? And not complain about automatic cars uh, being laggy and sluggish as the automatic system sort of th tries to figure out what you're, you're doing. Like thinking, 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 oh, I know, you need more power, so let me change the gear down one step. Those who prefer automatic cars uh, don't care about the precise control. They don't really want to know exactly what the engines do. They appreciate that the automatic system will take a load off their brain and reduce the amount of hand and footwork they need to do. And all they need to do is push the accelerator and it goes. All right, so you've got a, a similar situation with CMake versus Make. You might feel a little bit more isolated from the compilers out of necessity because CMake is, is handling the differences between them for you. Now, which one is best? Uh, I'm sure you know, people, people inevitably, inevitably ask which one CMake or Make is best. And I, I would think about it a little bit differently. Uh, which one should you use depends on your situation. So if you need a project, if you need to get up and running fast, use whatever you're used to. So there are still things that I find easier to do in the old make than in CMake. Right? Um, so it's a general rule in, in engineering and in software development. Use what you're familiar with if you need to go fast. Don't go using the latest, greatest sounding tools. Use what you, you're familiar with. Now, if you are building something that you know needs to be cross-platform or that you have ambitions to make cross-platform, then yeah, that's why CMake was invented. So I'd say go for CMake. And if you're new to C++, I would suggest just learn CMake immediately. It's the de facto standard. It does have areas where it's, it's easier to use than old GNU Make. And whatever you use is going to take effort and time and effort to learn. So you might as well learn the one that will uh, get you building cross-platform software sooner rather than later. Speaking of which, if you need to learn CMake, then the CMake tutorial is for you. Click the link below the video. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.